Um, as Rakesh said, uh, I'm Sunil, and uh, I, uh, I work a lot about uh, naturopathy and uh, how the body is working. So the link with uh, when I, I met Rakesh was uh, obvious to me about natu uh, naturopathy and permaculture, because uh, it's the same way of understanding uh, nature and how it works on our body or in our garden. So uh, the idea is about this. And uh, we, we created a, a course together. Uh, and also we, br we brought in that course uh, some kind of uh, uh, tantric uh, medicine, uh, tantric tools from India, so from the yogic culture. And I feel really uh, that it's re a really interesting aspect of it. Um, because it, it creates with some kind of um, um, work uh, with, uh, with symbolism and uh, the way of we work on the mental aspect, it creates uh, stability to the body. And so that's a, a nice, uh, nice approach we, we brought into, into the, that course. Um, I would like to know uh, if you have uh, some question about uh, what could be could be permaculture of the body somehow. No. Anybody have a interesting subject to share? Okay, no. Um, the idea we I, I want to share uh, with you is about. Um, why it's interesting to talk about this uh, in the Roots and Resilience uh, channel is uh, because um, many times uh, in the permaculture groups and when we want to make projects, we have to, to, to put a lot of energy in outside uh, things, in the outside world. And it's really difficult to, to really uh, manage every aspect when uh, our own body and our own system is not stable and have not enough energy to, 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 to create something else in the outside world. So the idea was also to really uh, offer the, the power to uh, understand how this uh, mechanism is working and how to manage very well the energy within to create what you want in your outside world but first of all, in your inside world. Um, does it make sense for anybody? Yes. So uh, in, on that uh, ap approach, the idea is really to find uh, the time, really the, uh, some time to pay atten and attention to, to our system and our own body. Because when we uh, focus on the, all the time uh, on the outside, situation, um, the survival aspect of our uh, mental, our mind and our uh, physiology is working against us. So the idea is to really um, find some, um, some times in our lives, in our daily life, to really focus only our attention only on the body and not on the, on the body, the mind, and uh, uh, the way we, we live, and not only on what I have to do on our doing, our acts. It's all also about focusing our attention on how to be. And so um, for that purpose, uh, as Rakesh said, we, we use a, a tool, uh, mainly it's the Prama, it's using uh, the triangle as a symbol because the triangle uh, is a symbol of stability. And the idea is to, 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 to turn around body mechanism, how it works, how to create balance uh, within it, work on the mental aspect, the mind, and also the spiritual aspect because all the three are connected. And to approach it, it's also interesting to see it uh, with a triangle about exercise, each part of, uh, of the, how to say this? Um, you have the, the body aspect, 
So body, you can exercise it, you can feed it, or you can uh, put it at rest. And it's the same for the mental aspect, the same for the spiritual aspect. How to feed your spirituality, how to feed your mental, and you have to put it at rest and exercise also it. So how to create a kind of harmony and synchronicity between each aspect to uh, make it work in this, uh, a focused way, a unique way to really get this power uh, within yourself to create what you want in your life. So this is all about the, the life design somehow. So it's why it's interesting to focus also about your aims, your objectives, but the idea is to, to find a way to, to build the strengths to achieve them. Rakesh, do you want to, to complete some, or you want I talk about some aspect? Okay, no, I mean, that, that's good. So, yeah, so just to kind of restate what, um, what the main purpose of it, as Sunil has said, is for each individual to look into themselves to see, you know, um, where are they currently at? You know, what, what, what their, their physical state of health, their mental state of health, their, their relationship with the outside world, which is how I kind of define spirituality. It's this connection of something beyond yourself. Um, and so, because if any of those is out of sync, you know, if we, so we could be very, very focused on, you know, our physical health, uh, but we're not taking care of our mental health and we're not really having this deep, beautiful connection with the outside world, then this is imbalanced, you know, in this, and so, doing this kind of work it's it's about how to yeah how to understand well yeah also some people get obsessive about physical health and that in itself leads to all kinds of mental imbalance as well as the the often overstressing the body and so that in itself is not good in that is also unhealthy so it's these tools are really there to help us to understand how do we really find this nice balance so you know so what feeds us what allows us you know so like if you think think of your body just for this exercise as a as some kind of a machine and the machine needs some kind of a fuel some kind of you know something to keep it going and you know there's a big difference between using um you know uh, like the like really horrible if it's like a car or something just using really poor quality oil that is just really going to make your uh engine really you know barely run but you know you pour that in compared to like the really finest quality um oil that is just going to make your car run smooth and beautifully same with your body what what do you fuel how do you fuel yourself you know there's one thing just eating food but is that food really enriching you? Is it really vibrant, full of life and really going to you know, really feed you in, in more ways than just, you know, uh, like the basic bare minimum? And so, yeah, so, so there's the food that what keeps you going. Um, there's the book. What also allows you to, to kind of expand, to grow, to become better, to become richer, more vibrant, more subtle, more, you know, in love, more, how do you grow? You know, so, so this is kind of exercise. And then what about rest to recuperate, refresh, cleanse, purify, so that your body has a chance to just regenerate itself. So we look at each of those to see how we can do that using lots of different tools, including naturopathy and various things. But then we do the same for the mental. You know, what feeds us mentally? What exercises us, pushes us, allows us to be, you know, what pushes us, what allows us to grow mentally? And what about um, how do we get our mental rest? 
exercise, cleansing, purifying, and so on. And then we do the same for spiritual. And then we start to look at, well, what are we doing well already? What is it that we're not doing so well? And therefore, what are the areas that we want to now look into so that we can now start making some kind of a design? And we put it into a permaculture design process, very similar to what Steve and Steve presented earlier. You know, the whole Ikigai is fantastic, beautiful. Um, well, you know, I, I know the, the way that I kind of describe Ikigai is, is what is it that wakes you up in the morning that makes you, oh my God, it's Monday morning, great. Ah, yes, this is your Ikigai. This is your Ikigai. This is, you know, what is it that makes you so passionate and so, wow. Why is it that we don't have more of this in our life? You know, what is it that we're doing in our lives that, oh my God, it's Monday morning. Oh, do I really have to get up? You know, oof, can I, yeah, that snooze, oh, that snooze button. Oh, another 10 minutes, please, another 10 minutes. Why? Why are we like this? Why isn't it, why isn't it life just like, whoa, yeah, brilliant. So how can we design that in? How yeah, we... because, yeah, because uh, I want to, to tell that, uh, what said Rakesh, that, it's not about a, a lack of willing. Some people are like, often they are like guilty because, okay, I, I'm not so motivated. This is my, my fault, uh, my own fault because I'm, I'm not really uh, in the move. And, and the idea is, in fact, we are responsible of our situation in the sense that we can respond to it. We can find solution because we, our way of living is creating what is good for us and what is uh, not working so well for us. So somehow the idea is really to focus on how to find that extra energy, how to build our system to receive and use that energy around us and make it uh, make you, our life really passionate and, and not just healthy, but very intense. And adventurous, I would mm -hmm. say. Yeah, exactly. So it's about looking at all the different aspects of life. What gives us our sense of purpose? Why are we alive? Why do we exist? What is it that makes us tick? You know. So how do we feed that? How do we nurture that? How do we, you know, design that into our lives so that we feel really fulfilled? That we feel, yeah, there's a this world is a better place for me living here because I'm doing this. I'm creating this in the world. I'm helping people in this way. How do we design that into our lives? How do we design, um, you know, yeah, how do we find that balance, that, that real joyful balance? And Sunil, I don't know, maybe you want to talk a little bit about the naturopathy side. So what we've been discussing there is more the kind of tantric side and the permaculture side. And the other part is naturopathy. Maybe you want, I think we've got three, four, five minutes left. So maybe... Yeah, it's uh, because the, the idea is the, <clears throat> that all, um, it's also about the willing. It's not, yeah, you have not the willing, you're guilty about, I don't have this energy. In fact, our body is a, a big uh, a chemistry factory and our mood, how we feel, how we, we receive we are, our sensitivity to different things. Uh, our way to to uh, respond quickly or to to even some good events somehow some things we we want to happen in our lives when they happen we are not so happy and we are like what is happening within me normally I, everything is very well but i don't feel really well inside or any joy and in fact it's just because the, the chemistry inside the factory is not working so well for many reasons and there is there are very very easy tools to analyze ourselves how the body is working and uh, our system is uh, if, if it's um, <clears throat> tense or really congested by toxicity we can e I easily uh, discover it mainly uh, using some uh, iridology tools uh, and, and analyzing the iris in the eye because uh, uh, all the body have a nervous response uh, with the, the iris in the eye 
<clears throat> and in fact, um, by just analyzing that, it's one tool, but we have many. And by analyzing how your body is functioning, if um, you find where uh, your chemistry factory is not functioning well, you can easily find the, the way to, to, to create a solution for yourself and make this chemistry working better and better. Because mainly, problem we have is that we take outside the uh, situation to make our body function. So the idea is to change the dynamic, make the body working by its own, and not be compulsive about something external. It could be a product, or it could be a situation. It could be, uh, for example, some people are very uh, addicted to, to sports or high risk situation. It's also a, a body problem, Physi physiology, ah, <laughs> difficult to say in English, physiologically, it's a very um, uh, existing at that base. In the physiology of people, physiology of people, it's existing. For example, people who need risk, they have their adrenals, their glandular system is really down and nervous system is really exhausted so to make it uh, working for relaxation they need to rush it uh, very strongly for example uh, making uh, some jump from plane or making uh, some uh, very high uh, risk uh, sports to feel some uh, relaxation is inside so they are taking an outside situation to push their body and feel uh, feel well somehow the idea is to stop this kind of ex uh, uh, exciting tools to our body, could be that or could be coffee or other things, and to build inside the real chemistry we need. So naturopathy is a, is a really good, uh, um, it's, naturopathy is not really a kind of a system, but it's just the idea that you understand nature, how it works, and you make it work for yourself. It's like permaculture. You understand the ecosystem of it, and you make some tweaks to, to make it well in harmony. Do you have some okay. questions about it? Wonderful. I think we're more or less at the end of time, aren't we, Sophie? Okay, okay. I think that's uh, pretty much it. Yeah. If we're going to do the last session that you wanted, about the harvesting from the garden, then yeah, we've got like 10 minutes for that and then a checkout. Okay, so maybe I can also just quickly share my screen so you can see the, uh, yeah, so this is the, the promotion for it. So these are the dates. So it starts in May 15th, 16th, and then 22nd and 23rd of May. And then it's every Saturday for four sessions, 29th, 5th, 12th, 19th, and then again we come back together again to do a Saturday and Sunday. So it's um, yeah, it's just a little over a month um, in the evenings, and um, yeah, like most of the courses, it's by donation. You know, um, whatever people can afford, whatever you feel is fair. Um, yeah, just just contribute whatever whatever you feel is, is appropriate. But it's. Um, it's a really transformative event. It really, most people who uh, have done it, you know, they write back to me a year or so later to say how much it's really changed their lives. And um, yeah, so it's, it's something I'm, I'm really, really enjoying doing. So I, I'd really encourage people uh, to, to consider it. Um, so yeah, so it's coming up soon. So if that's interesting to you, get in touch. And yeah, hopefully see you there. Okay, thank you very much, Sunil. Um, sure. Thank you, Rakesh. I'm gonna can I start to switch back to this video. So, um, oops, it's not working. So people were, um, yeah, people were interested to find out. Well, what is it that we're eating from our gardens right now? So, um, yeah, it'd be nice to hear from each other. 
what um obviously we're all from slightly different parts of the world so maybe there's different things growing in different areas but it'd be really interesting to find out what um you know yeah what's coming up already so it's april it's the, you know spring is just sprung and um and stuff is just coming up but yeah what's in your garden so who who's got a list of things i've just taken some photographs by the way so if um so in a moment i can kind of share some of the things in my garden but it'd be nice to hear from others so who's who's already either eating from their garden or foraging Yeah, I am mainly living on kale and Swiss chard at the moment. It's getting a little bit boring, I have to say. But um, and 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 some dandelion, but try not to eat too much dandelion at the moment. Um, trying to leave the flowers for the bees until I've got some more flowers out, um, and then I'm gonna pick some dandelion flowers and make some stuff. But yeah, it's mainly kale and Swiss chard. <laughs> Okay. What else? Who else has got other things growing in their garden other than kale and Swiss chard? Swiss chard. Hmm. We've got okay. ramsons, chives, no, kale. kale um, what's it? The um, Dobbinsons? And curly kale. So it's all the green stuff at the moment. And as I say, the. Uh, the uh, nettles are only about an inch high at the moment, so I'm looking forward to them. Okay. Sophie, what have you got going? I've got, yeah, also a lot of brassicas. They're always quick to come up. So I've got perennial kale. I've got kaylets, which are crazy. They're like giant towers at the moment. Um, you know, kaylets, they like grow up like uh, Brussels sprouts. Um, but instead of being like a closed head, they're like an open head. So they're like all these crazy little cabbages like growing up in a spiral and they're about as tall as me. And they've been the hardiest thing that survived. I've got a lot of that. I've got a lot of, um, yeah, like mixed mustard greens. I've got lots of alliums, like lots of wild alliums popping up everywhere. I've got lots of Melissa. I've got lots of... Um, Hedge mustard, which is another brassica. That's all I've like shaken seeds and it's sprouting everywhere. That's really nice. Um, sorrel, a lot of sorrel everywhere. Yeah, like everywhere there's just, yeah, things for eating. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the grass looks so beautiful. I feel like I could just go and like chew on the grass because it's just so beautiful everywhere at the moment like so many clovers and dead nettles and wild peas and wild beans yeah cool so these photos i took i think yesterday or day before yesterday and i noticed that i, I missed a few out as well so there's there's more than just this so this is um allium triquetrum so you can eat the, the flower, you can eat the, the actual green, uh, you can eat the root, the, the bulb itself. You know, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's incredibly prolific. This is a, uh, a black spearmint, no, black peppermint, that's the one, black peppermint. So it's a very unusual mint, but really strong. And I mean, really strong. It's fantastic. I love it. Um, so these are some brassicas. These are kind of, uh, uh, um, this was a kind of broccoli, I think. And so I'm just literally eating just the, like the broccoli heads. And, you know, so right now I'm eating lots and lots of these flowers and, um, and heads and things. Yeah, so like, like these, which is just really, you know, just eat it like that you don't need to cook it or anything just as a salad uh, i don't eat it so much but um this is comfrey this is my favorite comfrey because it grows really nice and low to the ground it's uh hidcock blue so it you know you can grow it underneath your trees and things without it uh, really yeah taking over too much uh it's a really good one this is my curly kale that's coming back um fennel 
This is fever fuel. All right, I'm not really eating it. It's more for medicine. Um, and this again, I I'll eat it occasionally. But, you know, I'll I'll pick whatever I can. So when I'm digging them up, this is green alkanet. I'll eat the uh, the flowers. I'll as I'm digging it up, I just pop the flowers off and just put it aside and then just add it to, to my meal or something. So it's not like it's making a full meal, but it's, you know, it adds to something. This is uh, cabbage. Uh, so again, I'm eating the, um, you know, the flowers and the flower buds, which is, you know, obviously I'm not eating all of them because many of them uh, are attracting insects, but it just keeps producing more and more and more and more. As much as you harvest, it just keeps producing more of them. So, you know, you can actually eat quite a substantial amount and it just, just keeps coming back. So this is a land cress, really strong. If you like your things nice and peppery, this is fantastic land cress. And this is, uh, this is the land cress flower as well. Um, Melissa, as Sophie said, which is also come back through again. This is a jack in the hedge or garlic mustard. Uh, so it's actually, yeah, it's not a garlic, it's not in the alum, but it's in the mustard family. Again, very nutritious, very, yeah, very hardy, a real good tough one. I don't actually know the real name of this. It's a type of mustard green and it's incredibly strong. I mean, wow, really mustardy, almost not quite as strong as a horseradish, but it's kind of, you know, it almost has that kind of pungency. It's really strong, really amazing. I love it. Um, nettles are coming back really strong. Uh, perpetual spinach or chard, whatever you want to call it. These are radishes that I actually grew last year. So I've kept some of the radish, uh, yeah, radishes. So by constantly harvesting and pulling it back, constantly harvesting, constantly harvesting, I've managed to keep, you know, not allowing, allow most of them to go to seed because I eat the seeds and the seed pods and the flowers and what have you. But by um, stopping some of them from actually going to seed and going to flower, you can still have more, uh, yeah, more leaves. And they are now flowering as well. So now I've got this right now, I'm also eating flowers and blah, blah, blah from that. And, uh, uh, seed pods and things. And so this is, um, again, another chard, like a rainbow chard. Uh, this is rocket flowers. This doesn't look particularly appetizing at the moment, but um, trust me, they are much nicer than that in some places. Oh, it hasn't delicious. rained. It hasn't rained in England for, well, in London anyway, for about five, six weeks. So some of those are looking a bit funny. This is sedum spectable. Again, another one you can add to your salads. This is another type of sorrel, a different type of sorrel. And then this is my cabbage. This is my um, Daunton, teen, uh, Taunton Dean kale. Which wow, this it's continues. looking lush and huge. It's, yeah, I think the largest, when no one was here for a couple of years, the largest I saw it get to was about three meters wide by about two two and a half meters tall and uh yeah it really got out of hand it doesn't grow nice and neat like a walking what's that a walking, walking stick, stick kale yeah yeah it just grow, it grows wherever it wants to grow so um so it's a bit bushy it's a bit you know so you have to work hard to kind of keep it into a shape or just let it go to wherever it wants to go and just manage it by constantly eating it and this you know even in the snow it's still got leaves and you can still be eating it even then so amazing this is a walking onion uh, again you can eat the bulbs you can eat the you know well all of it and it puts little bulb bits on the the top and then sometimes it has another shoot and then more little bulbs on top of that and so when it gets heavy it kind of falls down and it plants itself somewhere else hence calling it a walking onion um, a really funny one this is a borage, white borage, those of you who are keen eyed. Um, yeah, which is a, a different variety. And it's, uh, well, yeah, it's wonderful. It's just like normal borage. White dead nettles. Um, 
and we're back to the aliens again. So, and I know that I've missed out Burdock from there. I've missed out, um, oh, I should have looked up the name, Pet Petioli, Petioli, oh, yeah. It's another wild one that just <laughs> speeds itself and it just can't, it's just all over the garden kind of thing. Uh, I've obviously missed out things like dandelions. I've missed out the goose grass. Um, and then for those of you who chickweed. eat. Chickweed. Yeah, there's chickweed there as well. I mean, wow. It's, it's so more like, much. it's more like, what are you not eating from the garden right now, right? It's like, mm -hmm. I literally feel like I could get like a horse and just go and chew the grass because yeah, there's so many good things. I think everything looks delicious. Yeah, and if you're into teas and things, then you know all your raspberry leaves are coming out and your um, strawberry leaves. Personally, I, I'm not into tea so much, so I don't really do things like that. But they're there if, if that's what rocks your boat. Um, there's so much food right now. Uh, and the reason there is so much food is because many of these are either perennial or they are self-seeders that have been, um, well, actually, no, very few of these are things that are coming back from last year. Most of these are because they were grown last year and I've kept them going through the winter. And, um, and because they're perennial or biannual or self-seeders, they're there all year round. You know, I don't have to start them, take care of them, pamper them, put them out, and then, oh, they've died because the frost came, and then start again. I don't have to do any of that. It's just outside. Okay, I'm in London, so it's a few degrees warmer than, um, you know, than other parts of England, but not as warm as down in, you know, Cornwall and places. So, um but yeah so it's, it's just a case of finding the plants that do this in your region and as i say so i've not had a day where i haven't been able to eat something from the garden all year even in even when it was snowing i was still collecting things from the garden so and obviously you preserve a lot of stuff you you know um yeah, so even if I haven't collected it, I'm still eating from my garden from what I collected from before. And this is just a small town back garden in London, on the suburbs of London. So really easy. Lovely. So, how are we doing for the time? We've got 10 minutes left, so should we go for a checkout if there okay. are no questions? Okay, I'm going to stop, uh, stop broadcasting in that case.